Hello and welcome back Exiles to one of the most requested build guides on the channel to date which is my low life righteous fire guardian which I should say mana guardian because now it relies more on mana so yeah now this build I have never in my life spent more time min maxing and perfecting a build like the time I spent on this one and it's no big secret that righteous fire is my favorite skill and for that reason, I'm presenting you my Mark II version of this build. Now, before we get into the passive tree and items, let me just clarify one thing before, because, you know, I know right now you are asking yourself this question. Hey, Phoenix, why you are showing us, uh, showing us the version of this build with 18-ish thousand energy shield instead of showing us the one with, you know, the one that you use to AFK Uber Elder and Cortex with 23,000 energy shield and even more. Well, the reason for this is that there is more than one version of this build. Now, I have to clear something. This is not the same Guardian character I have used to review this build in the previous league and the one before it and before it. This is a new character that I have made specifically to be a general purpose a mana guardian you know laura fresh fire guardian it can do everything however the afk one that i've used to kill uber elder you know and cortex with twenty three thousand energy shield and more it's only made to afk bosses and it has so many downsides that it can basically it can't be used to play regularly you know just like normal path of exile you can only do specific things with it it's, it's made it's made more like a challenge breaker it's not a build that can do everything so the difference between you know the, the quick differences between these two builds the afk version just like tries to hoard as much energy shield as possible and energy shield regeneration at the cost of everything else it has no chaos resistance whatsoever it uses a value regalia for like bosses with no chaos damage because most bosses they have no bo no chaos damage at all and it uses the Chevron's ring, the one that blocks mana regeneration at the cost of lots of energy shield and energy shield regeneration over time. It does not use memory vault helm, which means that it has very low armor compared to this one here. And it has no moving speed on boots because, as I said, you just want energy shield if you are AFK in bosses. Meanwhile, this version has everything. It has movement speed, it uses Shav's chest piece, it, it does not use Shav's ring, which means that I... I have mana to cast the Scorching Ray and so on. So I have basically two Guardians. One of them is an AFK boss farmer that can only do that and can do it very effectively. And I have this one. So I hope that clears things up. If you check the link in the description for the build profile, which I will go over in this in the remainder of this video, you will see that I have two Guardians. They almost share the same exact tree, except that this one, it has like, less energy shield and quite different gearing so now you understand that i have two guardian characters one of them is for everything and one of them is for afk bosses now with that out of the way last time i made a guide for this build you know this universal version of low life purchase fire in the previous league i had almost the same amount of energy shield at the same level uh, when i when i reviewed the build i had 19,000 energy shield at level 98 but here i have less but i'm level 95 and you know you could say that i will have the same amount of energy shield at the same level when i reviewed this build in the previous league but i managed to gain you know benefits in other forms not only like uh, right now if i just want to have a high energy shield i can have 21,000 energy shield on this version of the build but you can have better things for example you can use saffles frame it doesn't matter if it's legacy or not, you just need the four all maximum elemental resistances. The one difference between legacy and non-legacy is not really important. It's just like having Saffles of Frame means that you have basically sacrificed one slot and instead of having high energy shield, now you have high elemental resistances. This is important because now you take less damage from Righteous Fire and you heal more and you take less damage from everything else. Because most types of, most types of damage that will kill you in this game are elemental damage. And I'm no longer using Presence of Chayola, and instead I have a self-crafted amulet with a total of over 4.4 of maximum life regenerated per second, including the League mechanic, which I will talk about when I get to the tree part. And uh, I, I I reached a point where I'm like, you know, 
fine tuning this build to benefit more from mana and attributes more than just like conversion from life to energy shield so that now if i remove this amulet and use the presence of chayula not only i will have less energy shield but i will also have you know that i will lack the region that i can get from this amulet in addition to the area effect and area damage craft now i will go into detail when i get in deep with the itemization section usually i go to the passive tree first which i will start doing in one minute and uh, you know i have memory vault here which as i said something i don't use with the other variation of this build i have the one that afk bosses uses mind spiral which is a helm that gives you 10 percent of maximum mana as extra energy shield and with a mana guardian you will have over 7,000 mana usually around 8,000, 9,000 at level 100 so you know that helm can give you more energy shield but if you are mapping physical damage is like more important to mitigate than elemental damage most of the time so yeah th these are the improvements compared to you know in the past like i have like instead of 10,000 armor i have 26,000 more than 26,000 armor i have almost 87 all, element all max elemental resistances and i have way more you know overall re regeneration compared to previous uh, previously all that while maintaining the same level of energy shield and trust me these differences are huge and I'm sure you have noticed this with the Uber Elder easy mode at the start of the video. I was able to tank like anything I want. This build can go whenever it pleases. And it can do something up to 1000 delve deep. And that's at the current level. Like you can have 20,000 energy shield with this version. By just like stacking mana up to level 100. So let's go over the passive tree and the order of the ascendancy. As a start you go for time of need while leveling assuming that you want to level with righteous fire because let me tell you something leveling up as a righteous fire guardian is probably and arguably the worst leveling experience in this entire game you most likely want to play a fire caster guardian until you are level 70 and you can use you know a low life gear and i for that i highly recommend you that this is not your you know the league starter build you should have some currency in store you should have some unique items to help you level up because you know we are stacking stuff that are completely useless for a, a leveling character like attribute you know fire damage over time you will not be using righteous fire from the get-go that's obvious because you need too much sustain especially with the energy shield version to be able to use righteous fire effectively without killing yourself and uh yeah you need the mana reservation nodes so you know this build can't be really utilized very well unless it's level you know 70 or above Alternatively, you can follow one of the other guides on YouTube which tells you how to level up as a low life righteous fire guardians and you will use righteous fire from level 30 and above. But in order to get the unique items and you know the knowledge of when and how to get them and use them, you know, to just be able to level up as a low life righteous fire guardian with righteous fire starting from level 30 40, you will spend a day like gaining knowledge on what items do I need to level up with righteous fire. So an easy way to just uh, to level up with this build is just like I, I level up this one with like fireballs like it doesn't really matter just use a high damage fire skill and until you are level 70 kill killing kitava will be a problem but it's okay that's just kitava for you once you are level 70 you know just easy easy stuff so you go for time of need then you go for uh Really, it doesn't really matter because the rest of the nodes really requires you to be level 70 and above. Because this one requires you, this one gives you benefit, pure reserved mana and life. And usually you would not be dealing with reservation until the end game. So let's say you go for Raiding Crusade, that plus 20 to elemental resistance is the only reason why I went with this node. You can go with Bastion of Hope, it gives you block chance, but that doesn't work with Saffel's frame because you can't block attacks while you have uh, Saffel's frame on so the 50% chance to block attack damage every two seconds for for two seconds every five seconds will not work with Saffel's frame but you will gain a stun immunity if you have blocked in the past 10 seconds it doesn't say blocked attack it just say if you have blocked in the past eight seconds so you can block spill damage or attack damage well you can't block attack damage with Saffel's frame but you can block spill damage and that will be easy with Saffel's frame and you will you won't be stunned all the time but, you know, for the end game, just go for this. The plus 20 elemental resistances is like almost running level 15, you know, purity of elements. Having elemental resistances here will allow you to invest into energy shield in other places. In addition, if you are in a party 
and not many people play Guardian these days. So you can benefit from the other uh, mod on the Ascendancy node, which is 10% more damage if you have at least a single ally, which is good because when you, when delving, you would want to have one guy with you. That that you know th that just how you can get the best out of your mana Guardian. It it helps to buff the you know allies with you know, armor and energy shield for reserved um, mana and life from the Radiant Faith Ascendancy node. And this one just like helps you in parties overall. And the 20% ornamental resistance is still good when you are playing solo. And if you are playing in a full party, all of your allies have onslaught. So that's good. Although we have an onslaught flask, but doesn't really matter. And uh, finally, the last node you should take is Unwavering Faith. This basically adds more benefits to every aura, aura you are running. So for example, I run Clarity. Now with this node, even Clarity will give me 0.2% of life regenerated per second and one physic phys mitigation. Understand that these are count, these counts as benefit from your aura. So for example, you have aura effectiveness, uh, in, you know, increased nodes on the tree. So let's say you have 100% uh, aura effectiveness increase, which which kind of impossible to have, but let's say you have that. Now, Running clarity will give you 0.4% of max off regenerate per second and two phase mitigation. So these are added to the aura itself, and anything that boosts the effect of the aura will now boost these added benefits to the aura from the ascendancy node. So that's good for the late game, especially when you are ho when you start to take the reservation nodes and the aura effectiveness nodes, and uh, even the small ascendancy node nodes over here this one and this one they give you five uh, double five percent uh, increased effect of non curse or from your skill so these also counts toward increasing the benefits granted by this one this is a very tanky build that yeah we, yeah we are stunned we have the uh, brian king uh, pantheon which means that we can only be stunned once every four seconds and that's really not a problem even if i'm stunned all the time like i'm very tanky i don't care what the enemy throws throws at me so yeah enough talking about the ascendancy the tree and then the in the description as usual you can copy it but the main idea behind this tree i have improved it a lot since the previous update and uh, between those updates the previous leak and the current one a, a very big nerf happened in the passive tree aside from the nerf to the righteous fire damage itself which is healthy mind jewel is now limited to one and i want you to pay attention here because y yes every single position where i had healthy mind like for example here i had healthy mind here to convert these two into energy shield i also had one here to convert these nodes into ener uh, uh, sorry i mean mana not energy shield the life converted into double twice as much mana with healthy mind and radius and uh, I also had one over here to convert these four. Instead of giving life and energy shield, now they give mana and energy shield. So now I can do that because I can only use one instead of unlimited. So what I do is that every single jewel socket that used to have healthy mind can, could be replaced with like, you know, a four modded jewel that almost gives you the same amount of energy shield overall uh, instead of having healthy mind. And with the one healthy mind you can use, the best slot you can put it in after doing like 50 hours of research on the tree. Like this one was the one because it converts these two and these three into full mana. Now, I've never talked about why you want to, why you would want to have mana in this build because so far I didn't establish why mana is energy shield for us. Now, you, I know that most of you guys know, but this ascendancy node gives you you know, energy shield based on 15% of your reserved mana. I have 99% of my mana reserved. Also, this one gives you 4%. Also, the, your Watcher's Eye will give you 18% from the Clarity mod, which you should get as your starting Watcher's Eye. Ultimately, you should upgrade f with one that has energy shield recovery rate where affected by discipline, because recovery rate will allow you to sustain Righteous Fire even, you know, it will be easier to su sustain Righteous Fire with it. So around, you know, around 40% of mana is energy shield, and we have lots of mana. Scaling mana is way easier than scaling, you know, st something like life converted to energy shield or just flat energy shield. Mana is extremely easy to scale, even with a single healthy mind jewel. These nodes, like you see, this one 18 increased maximum mana, this one 28%, this one is 20, this one is 10. Compared to the original values that these nodes had, which is half as much for life, and it's not very effective to convert only 20% of that to energy shield with presence of Chayula. That's why I completely abandoned using it in this build. And uh, yeah, that's it. You just make sure you take the aura, aura reservation nodes, the, the cluster over here and the cluster over here. 
and take the nodes over here for these are the you know the most efficient nodes in the tree to scale your fire damage over time and fire damage overall and uh, the rest goes into jewel sockets help oak for uh, bandits help oak and pantheons go for uh, as i said the soul of brian king and uh, the tukuhama one uh, this one over here gives you up to two percent fizz mitigation and two percent uh, uh, sorry, I mean 2% fizz mitigation per second to up to 4 seconds, so 8% fizz mitigation while stationary, and it gives you up to 2% life regeneration over 4 seconds if you are stationary. So that's a way to sustain righteous fire. If you are standing and casting scorching ray now, I just build up, you know, mitigation over time. So that's good if you are tanking Minotaur, as I as 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 you have seen at the start of the video, it's easy to tank Minotaur, especially with that Pantheon node, and uh, Brian King will help you you know, not be chain stunned. You will be stunned only once every four seconds and it will reduce the effective chill on you, which is extremely good versus Uber Elder. And uh, it gives you a higher thr a threshold to be stunned. And that's good because as I said, we don't have stun immunity in this build, but we, you know, being stunned, as I said, it's not really annoying. Like I don't mind being stunned once every four seconds. Sometimes I don't even get stunned while bamping because I have a high threshold stun you know, stunning me is not very easy. So as I said, you would healthy mind here. Try to have corrupted blood corruption on it so that now you can ignore having immunity to bleed on one of your flasks, which allowed me to have 100% increased armor during flask effect on one of my flasks. So that's extremely good. Uh, so yeah, that's it. There are a few important keystones that you should take. Uh, pain atonement, we are always low on life so that 30% more damage to our scorching ray. Uh, we have uh, elemental uh, equilibrium. S neither Scorching Ray nor Righteous Fire hits the enemy. They just like apply damage over time. So you cast Orb of Storms. It deals lightning damage to them. They gain resistance to lightning and 50% reduce resistances to fire and cold. And you just like start nuking them down with your burning skills. Finally, element Elemental Overload. I have... Uh, Increase the critical strike chance uh, gem linked to my orb of storms. So now every time it hits an enemy, it has a around 15 to 18 percent chance to deal a critical strike. And if you have dealt at least one critical strike in the past eight seconds, you gain 40 percent more elemental damage overall. So since you can't scale scorching ray or righteous fire with you know quit and quit multi because they are skills that does not hit, they only deal damage over time, which means that they inherently cannot crit. You need this node in order to be able to increase their damage. Uh, that's really the only way to scale their damage, aside from, you know, fire damage over time multiplier and burning damage and fire damage. Uh, Elemental Overload is the only way to scale Righteous Fire out outside of those, as you can't really take crit nodes with damage over time skills. And yeah, that's it for the tree, just like mana intelligence, because intelligence also gives you mana and energy shield. And uh, just a flat regeneration. You help off for even more regeneration. And you take every, you know, regeneration node on the tree. Almost every one. And uh, yeah, that's it. Just take this cluster to scale both your energy shield and mana. Which equals even more energy shield. And I have not talked about this before. I said that I'm using memory vault. and uh, But I didn't say what it, what it does for those who doesn't know. It gives you armor equal to your reserved mana. Now, I already get armor equal to 160% of my reserved life thanks to the ascendancy node. The same one that gives me energy shield for reserved mana. Now, I also gain armor equal to my reserved mana. So, right now I have almost 7,000 7, uh, mana, reserved mana. That's the equivalent of wearing an, like, for example, a chest beast with 7,000 flat armor. That's how powerful Memory Vault is in this build. And as I said, I have 20 over 26,000 armor. Uh, yes, I don't have endurance charges compared to something like a Juggernaut, but the massive amount of armor I have, just disgusting. I don't take any damage from physical attacks, unless if it was something like a Minotaur, which will not drop me below 20% even with the hardest map mods I even chimera it can't drop me below 100% uh, energy shield just from physical damage alone so uh, again the tree is in the description in conjunction with the entire profile make sure that you select the correct guardian they both use the same tree almost but the items are different now let's talk about your items the core item is Shaper's Touch with plus two level of socketed aura gems or AOE gems, doesn't matter. We have auras here, 
purities, level 21 purities. Now, level 21 purity will now become level 23, uh, which means that it will give you five additional maximum resistance instead of four. That's good. These gloves are so common. You can easily find one with plus two aura gems. And if you can't, just like buy every non-corrupted one on the market and val them. They go for like between one to five chaos orbs piece. So yeah, it's easy to get uh, gloves with this corruption. You can have plus two level of socketed duration gems, but you must have val versions of your purities. Otherwise, they will not gain. They are not duration val gems are only count they, they they are the only one that counts as duration for the purity gems if you have non val version you will not really benefit from plus two duration and the duration gem must be level 21 so that now it becomes level 23 so you know a val, at level 21 val gem it's extremely expensive because the only way to get something like that is to basically go to the corruption gem corruption altar and corrupt a non val level 20 gem and hope to hit you know level 21 and convert it into val variant at the same time and that that's that almost never happened with me in the all the 3000 hours i played this game so yeah get level 21 normal purities with plus two level of socket aoe or aura gems and uh, yeah, on your Shaper's Touch. So what does Shaper's touch, touch do for those who doesn't know? It converts Strength so that now Strength will give you the same benefits as Intelligence. Intelligence will give you now the same benefits as Dexterity. And same with Dexterity but to Strength. Now the attribute does not lose its base value. So now 400 points of Strength will give you their original benefits. In addition to the benefits of 400 Intelligence. That, that's... For me, like, if you have more attributes, the more benefits you gain from Shaper's Touch. I mainly use it to convert strength, unnecessary strength in this build, into useful intelligence. So, I have 4, 400 strength, and now they become 400 intelligence. So, imagine if I'm just wearing a gloves that says plus 400 intelligence and nothing else. That's why I'm using this item, basically. Now, this will also allow you to freely invest into strength nodes like this one. And I'm planning to invest into this one at level 96. I'm right now on level 95. And this node alone here will give me 350 energy shield total. Considering that it's a strength node, guys. It's a, it gives you 30 strength. And thanks to Shaper's Touch and the mana to energy shield conversion. Now, st strength is very useful. Like scaling strength on the tree is even more useful than just straight up scaling flat energy shield or even mana attributes are your best bet to scale energy shield overall so try to get flat strength and flat intelligence if possible next now another core item is uh, chevron's chest piece that's obvious now it doesn't matter if it's legacy or not before you ask why it's legacy this belt gains energy shield from converting mana to energy shield. So really it doesn't matter if this one, if you're playing on standard and you have legacy or non-legacy, you will not have, see a major difference to energy shield compared to me. I don't even utilize the delve mod which give, gives you increased energy shield from body armor. So there is really little to no focus on the fact that this one is legacy. You just need it to be able to run at low life and reserve your life. And it, it basically prevents chaos damage from bypassing energy shield, allowing you to utilize your life as auras, which I will get to it in a second. Try to have damage corruption on it. It will help mitigate the nerf that Righteous Fire recently got, which now it deals 20% of maximum energy shield da as damage instead of 40%. But now it has an added base fire damage, which kind of compensate for the nerf, but not very much at the higher amounts of energy shield. So... Yeah, having increased damage on your chevrons is pretty good. For your main 6 link Righteous Fire, you have Righteous Fire, Elemental Focus, because as I said, Righteous Fire cannot crit, so really Elemental Focus is a must-have on your 6 link. You have Burning Damage, uh, Efficacy, Concentrated Effect, and Increased Area Effect to remove the downside of Concentrated Effect. Now, you could potentially run Arcane Surge and Swift Affliction for more damage, but you will have this much area of effect. And if you consider running a map with, you know, less area of effect mod, then you would almost, you will have to hug the enemy in order to deal damage. So, you have good damage and area of effect with this 6 link uh, variation. And the damage is not really like, it's not noticeable even if you sw switch to Arcane Surge and Swift Affliction. It's really like, you are not really noticing a... Uh, 
big damage increase but you are noticing a huge area effect decrease like almost have as much area effect now next you have memory vault i talked about what it does uh, try to have life region on it as a corruption this will be very expensive but it's okay you can have really any other corruption you want or just like try to farm lab for 40% righteous fire increase that 40% increase righteous fire damage or area effect doesn't really matter and but for the end game tr really try to have life region corruption on it for its gym link you have uh, level 3 enlighten level 21 blood magic you it doesn't work with level 20 blood magic but it does work if you have level 4 enlighten but having level 4 enlighten is more expensive than having level 21 blood magic so you should take the cheaper route and just take 21 blood magic and level 3 enlighten you will link those with architect armor and discipline by the way the build is extremely cheap compared to you know the previous uh, version the one that i previewed in 3.7 update i think it was even 3.6 i can't remember anyway that one had two level 4 enlightened gems and one level 21 blood magic this one only has the blood magic and the rest is just like one level 3 enlightened and that's it uh you we have also by the way we have molten shell va molten shell and that's the last uh, gem in our gloves so we have triple purities level 23 purities and uh, molten shell now i haven't said this before but we have a total of 40 percent increased aura effectiveness this will allow your purity now to give you instead of five percent it will give you seven percent maximum elemental resistance so you should really try to have level 23 total to your purities if you can't have the plus two aura or aoe corruption on your gloves try to have them on your helm it works but you can't have life region on your gloves and life region is optimal to have on your helm so yeah next you have uh, your main weapon which is a scepter preferably a shaped void scepter level 85 or higher now why you want a void scepter it gives you the highest elemental damage roll as an implicit now scepters can now roll mana up to 129 i think as a standalone mod you can have around 170 with the hybrid which is mana and spell damage i don't think you can go above that but you we, you only care about having at least 100 mana on your scepter what you should do with your void scepter is that you should spam chaos orbs on it because you want two prefixes and that's it then you would want to multi mod you would want a high mana roll and you would want to suck it with gems are supported by elemental focus which will also gives you increased elemental damage as a second mod then you would want to multi mod into attribute and strength or intelligence as a suffix it doesn't really matter they are both good they are both counts at intelligence intelligence thanks to shaper's touch and finally you would want to craft instead of burning damage you would want to craft up to 20% to fire damage over time multiplier if you can't have mana if you are for example unlucky to hit a chaos orb on this uh, scepter and only get like either a high mana roll or only second gems are supported by elemental focus if you can't have both mods at the same time to multi mod then just like craft increased burning damage or flat mana instead but you really need uh, socketed gems are supported by elemental focus because we have scorching gray in here this build is very socket hungry i really want to run and set rings but i need resistances i have double you know resistance ring and uh, that made me basically run a four link scorching ray via the you know the socketed gems are supported by elemental focus now here you have uh, scorching ray infuse the channeling and burning damage support with elemental focus so that's a four link next you have uh, both of your rings they are very general purpose ideally you would want double rings with you know at least high strength and intelligence roll as suffix and high energy shield and mana roll as a prefix and you can have a resistance as your last suffix if you want if possible and for your last prefix preferably a very high life roll because life is translated into 160 percent of its original value as armor so that's a uh, an indirect way to have armor on your rings and uh, you should really try to get uh, rings like these with resistances implicit because we are running too many unique items in, in this build so having uh, resistance as an implicit on your ring is the most efficient way to get resistances instead of for example having resistance as a suffix because on suffixes you can have like 55 intelligence and that's a huge amount of energy shield overall and uh, yeah 
So get double rings with resistances and just uh, either multi mod into attributes and high mana roll prefix with energy shield or buy incursion rings like uh, what I'm doing here. Uh, an incursion base will come with T1 flat energy shield and 10% increased maximum energy shield in a single mod. You can basically now multi mod into an effectively six mods. Now, one of the craft here is legacy, which is hybrid life and mana. It really doesn't matter because now you can craft a flat energy shield and that's actually better than 40 mana. I understand that I said that mana is, you know, stacking mana is more efficient than stacking energy shield, but now you can craft, I think up to 34 flat energy shield on rings, which is still much more efficient than crafting 40 mana. The life is not really important with that hybrid craft. It's legacy now, just to craft energy shield as is your third prefix and uh, that's it you craft energy shield mana and increase damage if you want and suffix says you just, you just craft attributes like strength intelligence or dexterity or or all attributes if you need a bit a, a bit of everything so yeah you either buy a ring or craft it yourself with high dex uh, with high int and strength roll with mana and energy shield as your prefixes or you buy an incursion base and multi mod it basically the same thing just try to have a, have rings with resistances implicit next now we have an up a huge upgrade compared to presence of chayula the one amulet that we used in all the previous versions of this build get yourself a shaped marble amulet a minimum of level 79 or higher I think even you need level 83 or higher because you need to roll tier 1 increased attributes. This is basically your best in slot mod to have on your amulet because the best amulet you can have is a Eyes of, Re of the Great Wolf with 4% maximum life regen and 32% uh, increased attributes. But an amulet like that will go for 2 mirrors and that's basically a big no-no on my channel. I don't recommend like crazily expensive items so you get a marble amulet with you know a shaped marble, marble amulet you spam alteration orbs on it to get the increased attributes shaper mod then you annul and multi mod you craft a up to 20 percent increased maximum energy shield prefix mana and hybrid aoe and area damage as your final prefix for your last suffix you craft up to one percent life region which by the way is extremely difficult mod to unveil i had to unveil like 40 or 50 amulets and shields to get the tier one version of this mod you could be you could be lucky to get it immediately but because amulets can you basically unveil too many uh you know they can have any mod in the game really you can amulets can roll anything and everything so unveiling and unlocking the 1% life region as a, a suffix craft is extremely annoying. So this will take a bit of work for you to get. Alternatively, you can just ask someone else to craft it for you. It's it's basically a free craft. It only costs like 4 chaos orbs, I think. Maybe even 2 chaos orbs. But you should really try to get this craft. If you can't, by any reason, just craft uh, 17 to strength and intelligence. You know, it's not as good, but it will give you around 400 energy shield. Now, finally, for uh, belt, here you have a shaped belt. Now, it can be either a heavy belt as your, you know, budget option and or upgrade to crystal belt in the late game. They are almost equal because, you know, strength is good because now strength is intelligence to, thanks to shaper's touch. A heavy belt will roll up to 35 increase the strength as a prefix uh, sorry i mean as an implicit but having plus 80 increased maximum energy shield flat is better but by a small margin a crystal shaped crystal belts are extremely expensive so just go for a heavy belt a shaped heavy belt why shape belt because shape belts can roll up to 20 percent increased energy shield recovery rate and you would want to get this mod at any cost with alteration orbs uh, it doesn't matter if it takes you 1000 alteration orbs you should really try to get this one a tier one and the max roll because an increased energy shield recovery rate is an overall multiplier that will apply to regeneration from all sources so that's an easy way to increase your overall regeneration i have 30 percent on watcher's eye from the discipline mod and 20 percent on my build then you would want to multi mod because multi modding is almost as efficient as buying uh, a belt like this for 70 exalts what you want to want to multi mod in your belt is for prefixes a double hybrid energy shield and one defensive layer which is armor and evasion uh, this will equal into 
a tier 4 armor and a tier 4 evasion with tier 1 energy shield and finally you craft mana for your last suffix craft uh, either a resist or strength and intelligence boost because that's the most efficient craft you can have for increasing uh, your energy shield overall prioritize having 20 percent on your recovery mod that's more important than anything else because you have too much regeneration in this build to the point where that any recovery mod will give you more benefits compared to other righteous fire builds thanks mainly thanks to the marble amulet which by the way i didn't talk about this i have used the league mechanic to allocate warriors of blood which usually gives you life region equals to level 22 vitality aura you get this by free just by allocating this node in addition to 20 strength and it increases your stun threshold this is very good because as i said we are not stun immune in this build and you know, it's not very far away from where you usually stop pathing at the bottom left side of the tree, but it really exists in an awkward place where you you could potentially invest at the top side of the tree to get more mana and energy shield and regen and or effectiveness nodes instead of just going bottom to take this one. So that you basically just prefer to go top anyway and allocate this using your uh, oils. Or alternatively, if you wish to modify the tree and path manually over here, what you could do is take Charisma instead. This will allow you to basically have a link your purities with level 4 Enlightened Gem. And this will give you enough mana with Charisma to be able to run Herald of Ash. So that's a, a, an indirect way of increasing your damage, but you will sacrifice some energy shield because as I said, pathing at the top side is better than pathing at the bottom side because, you know, as I said, strength is good, but it's not as good as the mods you get over here, for example. And over here, you know, just like this area is better to path on than just going bottom. But we take this node with the oils. It's, it's almost free. It only takes one black oil and the remaining oils are basically free. So yeah, that's a free vitality, level 22 vitality. And uh, that's it, I think, for your belt, your amulet, Savile's frame. In it, you would want uh, Fortify linked with Shield Charge as your movement scale and level 1 Clarity. For boots, you either get a generic boot with tier 1 movement speed and double energy shield as a prefix and for suffixes you try to have a high intelligence roll with a resist uh, or like whatever other suffix you want, a dexterity maybe if you need dexterity. Or you get centric. Centric is an extremely uh, efficient unique boot that can go up to 200 energy shield with 30% quality either from corruption or from the syndicate craft bench. Uh, you can have regenerate 2% of life per second if you have been hit recently, lap enchant on it. Or you can have, uh, really, this is the most efficient enchant to have, but you can have a chance to dodge attack and spill hits if you want, just to be more tanky overall. And uh, for your Orb of Storms uh, setup here, we have a 4-link Orb of Storms. We use it to deal, we have Orb of Storms. Uh, we use it to apply flammability curse which applies 44% uh, reduced fire damage to enemies and uh, the way of how we can apply this curse is by linking orb of storms with curse and hit so that basically allows orb of storms now to not only applies elemental equilibrium to enemies it will also applies flammability so that's almost minus negative 100 fire resistance to all enemies caught uh, by orb of storms and with finally increased critical strikes uh, gem it will allow orb of storms to crit more frequently to trigger uh, elemental overload so that's a very you know universally good uh, falling setup used with uh, righteous fire builds and yeah that's pretty much it for your flasks i have uh, a quicksilver flask with immunity to curses although i have 25 percent reduced curse effectiveness on me thanks to the ascendancy uh which is, uh, by the way, time of need. I talked about it. It gives you one third of your life regenerated over one second every five seconds. It reduces the effective curses on you by 25%. So, you know, that's not really a big issue because I have complete immunity to curses on my quick silver flask. I just hate to map with Tim Chain on me because this build is not very fast by default. So, Tim Chain would just make you a turtle. That's why I have immunity to curses here. 
Next, you would want to, for the end game, get Bottled Faith. We only get this flask because of its high duration and the fact that any concentrated ground it creates, it has triple the radius, which means that you can free move around bosses while maintaining that 6% life regen every second. It is extremely good, especially against Shaper and Uber Elder. Uh, if you can't afford this because it's extremely expensive, just get any Sulfur Flask with a minute to bleed. If you couldn't get uh, corrupted blood corruption on your uh, healthy mind jewel, uh, next for uh, uh, for your other flasks, we have another end game flask over here, which is Cinder Swallow Urn. You can have th three percent life regen on it. It also recovers three percent of your maximum energy shield uh, per kill. So while mapping, you basically never die as you kill stuff. Uh, it allows you to do maps with almost no energy shield regeneration if you keep killing mobs so that's good uh, alternatively get any flask with onslaught an onslaught base flask and you could craft manually 3% life region on it if you have unveiled this mod on cinder and swallow urn af after killing the syndicate boss which uh, gives you can drop this flask and when you unveil it you can unveil the 3% life region if you select the uh, craft you will be able to craft it on your other flasks so you need to be able to at least have the craft unlocked to be able to use any other onslaught flask and craft 3% life regen on it. Next I have the ruby flask. This will reduce fire damage taken by 20%. This is good to sustain righteous fire even more. It also has a minute to freeze for, you know, uber elder. And finally I have a granite flask. Uh, with this flask I have almost 50,000 freaking armor. So that's pretty much it. This build is basically immune to everything it can do delve up to 1000 and even at that depth it will be very easy uh, it doesn't really bother with physical damage even without endurance charges uh, this build doesn't really take much damage from elemental damage thanks to the huge amount of all maximum resistances we have uh, what else we have a high energy shield cap which can go up to 20,000 at level 100 with these items uh, if you use a high energy shield uh, shield you can have even more uh, so you can't be one-shotted by anything. One thing though, you really do not want to do Chayula. It's a boss that deals high chaos damage and you have minus 60%. So that's the one downside of not using presence of Chayula. Uh, it's really not an issue because chaos damage is very rare in this game. And since it can't bypass energy shield thanks to uh, Chevron's uh, chest piece, it's not a huge issue. I regenerate too quickly even if I take decent damage from chaos uh, damage source. It's still not a problem. It can't kill me. One thing however you can't kill which is the uh, tomb, uh, the lich tomb in Delve. Uh, the final phase will convert the boss into a version that deals chaos damage. If you try to do that boss even with this build with 30,000 energy shield he will be able to one shot you sometimes if he quits. Like it depends on the boss mods. Uh, he deals a very heavy chaos damage, so you should really try to avoid doing the something like uh, Chayula or the Tomb of the Lich in Delve. The regular Abyssal Lich does not deal chaos damage, so he should be easy to kill. And yeah, that that's pretty much it for the entire build. It's really a masterpiece. I have spent too much time uh, perfecting the tree, even after the nerf. It's kind of amazing how this build does, how well this build does. Uh, it has almost 1.2 million Shepard DPS right now at maximum scorching rate charges with elemental overload, uh, with everything, with all the flasks. And uh, that's compared to 1.6 million Shepard DPS before the nerf, but it's still very tanky. This is my go-to build for everything in this game. It, it, it literally do everything. It's fast, it deals high damage. May, not the highest. Well, if you want to just like, you know, record yourself killing a guardian in one second and post it on Reddit for the, those sick upvotes, this is not really the build for you. But if you just want something that can do everything and really is very forgiving for... You can do level 100 without dying with this build easily. Even if you are a new player who started playing yesterday. Uh, so yeah, that that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, any suggestions, leave them in the description. Uh, I mean the comment section. And I will make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. My name is Phoenix and I will see you all in the next video.